All right, so we don't get to talk about this a lot these days, and it's COVID. And it's not because I don't want to talk about it. Not that it's not happening. Not that it's still causing people to go to the hospital. That's not the case. But when you have a government, right, when you have a government that has made sure that we can't keep track, when you have a government that has stopped all data coming out to the point where we got to check wastewater levels of COVID to get an idea of what's going on, you kind of figure, yeah, it's a little bit hard, right? But it's intentional. It's intentional, right? Because if I stop collecting the data and people like Dr. Pierre can't report out because I won't give the data out anymore, then the general public will assume that, yep, COVID's in the bag, nothing to worry about. Keep it moving. Don't think about this disease that caused a worldwide pandemic just a few years ago, right? That's what it is, right? But every now and then, right, you'll see a headline pop up and it gets my eye and I say, oh, you know what? I guess we'll touch a little bit about it, right? Because, hey, why not, right? Because I don't want to keep talking about children dying from measles because their parents refuse to vaccinate them. I want to try to avoid those as much as possible. So let's talk about this variant that's been kind of, you know, I guess concern. In fact, I don't know if they're even concerned anymore. I think a lot of it is clickbait. And the reason why I say that is because usually when they're talking about it, they want to stress that, hey, it's coming from over there, right? China, Hong Kong. Like they want to stress where it's coming from versus talking about like, oh, it's over here too, causing problem, right? So let's talk about the NB181 variant of COVID-19, right? And again, for those who've been listening uh, this long, you know, spoiler alert, it's not severely deadly, at least for now, not severely deadly. So it's not that you should be concerned that like, all right, man, I can't plan my the trip. But understand, summer is coming up. The summer is coming up. The kids are out of school. People are traveling. And we've talked about this ad nauseum. Guess what time periods COVID typically starts picking up? Summertime and Christmas, right? So I don't want people to be shocked or surprised when more of these diagnoses are happening during what? Summertime and Christmas time, because this is when the traveling happens, right? So again, we're getting into summer. A new variant's on the rise, the NB1.8.1 variant. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about severity, symptoms to worry about, and what you know what you should be doing. Spoiler alert again, getting a vaccine. Let's keep it moving. And we should have a conversation, probably should have a conversation with what RK and them are doing as far as like who should get the vaccine. But you know, leave it in the comments if you want to have a com- that, that if you want a separate video just on that. I might just do like a TikTok live about it, right? And just y'all just catch um, a TikTok live if you don't follow me on TikTok. We can throw it on YouTube as well, too. But it is important that you know it, it gets discussed. So I, I do see it, right? So let's talk about the NB181 variant, right? Currently is accounting for for 10% of all global COVID-19 sequences, right? So all of the sequences that they're they're diagnosing with COVID, this variant is responsible for 10% of it, which was up from 2.5% a month ago. So you may be thinking, oh, percent, oh, that's little, that's nothing. It was 2.5% about a month ago. It's up to 10% now. It's gonna keep going. Summer is coming. All right, let, let's, uh, so now, now that we're in the thick of things, let's have the conversation. All right, so let's talk about where it's from, right? What is it and where is it from, right? So it is a variant of the Omicron species of COVID, right? And for those who've been following this channel for as long as you can remember, we know that the biggest issue with the Omicron Omicron variants, not that they're super, super deadly, but they spread quickly. And if they spread quickly, guess what? That means more and more people end up getting it than who would used to get it, right? If it was the Delta, right? I know we're doing, we're giving throwback terms now. If it was the Delta, the Delta was deadlier, but not too many people got it in such a rapid fashion. Omicron was deadly, not in the fact that it was a deadlier variant, but the fact that instead of maybe Delta getting 10 people, Omicron got 50, right? just to give you an idea of difference, right? So this variant comes from the Omicron tree. It is currently, like I said, spread to have 22 different countries have now been diagnosed with the specific variant, 22 different countries. Like I said, we all travel, y'all. You know, we're all quote unquote outside, right? And we're not wearing masks, right? You know, need a hair there. But classified by the World Health Organization as a variant under monitoring, meaning that, yeah, you know what? We're not raising the alarms. We're not raising any alarms here. We're just saying, hey, 
you know what? I see it. I see you. I'm going to keep an eye on you. I do see you. Like that's kind of where that kind of comes into play. Why is this variant an issue? Variant has six spike protein mutations, including one at the position 445 that improves its ability to bind our cells. Again, shout, shout out again. Shout out. I love the science. Uh, and these mutations at this cause it to be better at dodging antibodies, right? So again, this is important for us to understand that when these variants occur, her, some mutation has to happen for it to like jump and cause a problem, right? So this is a mutation where from, again, you don't even have to be scientifically spoken like I just talked about. You don't have to be scientifically driven. You just need to understand that, hey, you know what? This variant is causing more problems and it's easier to dodge, right? And if it's dodging, guess guess what it's dodging? It's dodging the immune system, right? And because it's a dodging the immune system, it's allowed to replicate at much higher rates before your immune system can get a handle on it, right? Just so that's the we can get a, a bit of clarity on why dodging is important, right? Just think about this, right? If I'm an immune system and I'm trying to catch this variant, because I know if I catch it, I can figure out, all right, what, what are you? Okay, let me see how I deal with you. But if it takes a long time for me to catch you, right? Because you have all of these different mutations on these spike proteins, like, oh, this looks a little bit different. I'm not recognizing that and allows me to grow. That's where uh, the problems arise, right? So again, people who have had COVID or been vaccinated can have a reduced protection against this variant for that specific reason. So you could have been vaccinated from this uh, you can, from COVID, just COVID in general, right? But because of these certain mutations that occur, right? All of a sudden, like it may be able to avoid it and your protection may go from, let's say 90% to 75%, right? So just to give you an idea of visually thinking like, hey, when these variants occur, because that's always a question I get. Hey, if I got vaccinated, why do I care about these variants? Well, the reason why you get vaccinated is typically we like will backdate and say, hey, you know what? These were the variants that caused problems the year before, the six months prior, like we're retreating for that, but then a new variant comes around and then we have to worry about treating it uh, from there, right? So just important to understand that, yes, you can, and again, and this is, I say this ad nauseum, yes, you can be vaccinated and still have to worry about this. But if you are not vaccinated, you probably definitely should be worrying about this. Not to the point where I'm telling you that this is going to cause severe illness, because we're not seeing that yet, but it is an Omicron species, so it is going to spread a little bit quicker. Like, I've I, again, I'm in, I'm in nursing homes, and I know that that COVID-19 has fallen out of the flavor of the month because when people are having respiratory related distresses and diseases, people aren't even thinking about COVID anymore, right? Like I got to say, hey, they may have COVID, right? Like these are like, like I got to almost like remind people to say, hey, you know, we got to think about COVID when we're thinking about these respiratory distresses, right? It's, it's, it's not just coming randomly. Like, yeah, you know, COVID is here. Nobody, again, especially because no one's wearing masks. They're not required to wear masks, but no one's wearing masks as much. So people are just kind of walking and talking freely, right? And they're talking to multiple people and then that's how it starts so so understand that when we when we think about these variants and we think about the spread of these variants a lot of times right it's from these asymptomatic individuals who gives it to someone who can't really protect themselves and at the end of the day the fight with covid has always been a battle of hey this group can't really protect themselves like other groups so let's all get vaccinated to try to protect this group and we and if, if you've been following me long enough you know that that's actually a point of contention right that's a point attention like hey i don't care if that group can't protect themselves i don't want the vaccine again different conversation we'll have it later so let's let's get a conversation to talk about just some of the symptoms right because i think that's important right if we understand what the symptoms are what to look for and again this this might sound like a broken record right because a lot of the symptoms associated with the omicron variants of old are kind of similar to the same omicron variants of new right obviously dry cough sore throat nasal congestion body aches fever those are the big one right when you have like all of a sudden, right? Like you're down for the count because you're so tired, so fatigued, and you're getting fevers and chills and aches, and you start having some nasal congestion and pressure, right? And it happens very quickly, right? Because typically if you have a cold, it's something that slowly progresses, slowly progresses. But if you rest around and you got COVID, that thing hits you like a ton of bricks and you're down for the count, right? So understand like, yes, there's definitely something to think about. And typically you have, especially the Omicron variants are good for GI related symptoms, nausea, a little bit, diarrhea, vomiting, but those are the big ones, right? The fatigue, nasal congestion um, that usually occur within about a week, right? So definitely understanding that that occurs. Again, I'll, I'll repeat this, right? I will repeat 
repeat this because I don't want people to say, oh my God, Dr. Pierre is again screaming COVID to try to get everyone to wear their mask unbeknownst, right? Which again, a lot of people think I like I own mask company or something. I don't know, whatever. It does not, has not so far been shown to cause severe illnesses, but again, it just a little, it is because it's Omicron variant, much more rapid than we see, especially in the spread of it, right? So if you're a healthcare provider, and you got those patients start coming in and, you know, they're having those vague respiratory issues. I want you to put your thinking cap back on and make sure COVID shoots up the uh, differential diagnosis again, right? I know we put it away for a few months. I need you to bring it back. Summer is coming. I need you to bring back your differential diagnosis for COVID, especially because a lot of the outpatient treatment regimens that are available for COVID, you want to kind of start them as early as possible, right? You don't want to have these delays where you're not doing anything associated with it. So let's think about this, right? So, and again, we kind of mentioned this aspect of spreading fast, right? And, I, and, I, and I'll give some scientific, a little scientific segment on, right? But again, I don't want, especially for a lot of my audience who really don't really care about the science aspect of it, right? They just want to know, hey, what I need to worry about. Again, this talks about lab studies show that the NB181 binds more tightly to the ACE2 receptors, which allows it to be better at spreading, right? So again, it's just a lot of it. When we think about, especially if you had to think about from a simple standpoint, how our immune system works, our immune system says, hey, you know what? I got a foreign body that came into my house and guess what? I need to climb on top of it and put it down. That's how our immune system works, right? Again, I'm speaking very general. I do not want y'all running and being like, oh my God, he's done. Like, what does it mean? Like, I don't want y'all to do that. Don't waste your time, right? Just do it in the comments if you want to, but okay. But understand that like that's for the layman's term, that's kind of how it works. But if you have these variants that have a spike protein and now when I try to when I try to climb onto it, right, for my podcast, this is you can't see, but I'm like giving visual presentation on like the cell trying to, the end, the immuno antibody trying to climb onto this pathogen and it can't do it. And it takes too long to do it and it just says like oh i can't attach all right you can go by right because i don't recognize you you can go by and then because it goes by it starts replicating and start doing all of these things it shouldn't be doing in our body so that's so that's where the problems arise right so that's where like in four weeks it can go from 2.5 to cent for 10 percent right um here from global standpoint right that's a problem and again like i said it's starting to pick up here in the united states and if it picks up here in the united states we got it like i said we're not caught we're not we're not sounding the alarms the reason why i say that the reason why i say that reason why I think that's important for us to know because I think a lot of times this com- the conversation of COVID and just just what what COVID has done it's caused so much PTSD for a lot of people that even mentioning that something could be COVID could cause people to go crazy. All of a sudden they're worried. Oh my God, I don't want people to come here. I don't want to. I've been a mask wearer for as long as I like as long as I can remember. I love wearing masks. Right? I just like wearing masks, especially when I'm in a hospital setting. So COVID was like a blessing because I'm like, all right, yeah, I get to wear my mask. Cool. Love it. Um, but even now, I still wear a mask. I wear masks to all of the places I go to. And I'm like the oddball physician, right? Because a lot of physicians don't wear masks anymore, at least where I round. Um, so, it, you know, but I don't care about standing out. That don't really bother me, right? Again, this, this is why I jump on social media, right? Because I could care less about standing out, right? Especially when I'm trying to educate my community. But I understand that if I'm going into the, like if I was a firefighter, I wouldn't go into an area uh, that's a burning home without some equipment. That's how I think about it. Again, you can argue in the comments on that type of thought process. But again, so I figure, hey, if part of my equipment means I should, you know, wear a mask, why not? I'm gonna wear a mask. I'm rocking out. We rocking with the mask. But I, I see what happens now is that having a conversation about COVID or even like suggesting that your patient could have COVID causes so many people to like to get stage fright. Because again, imagine, imagine if you have a person with COVID. Let's say you're in a nursing home. Person gets diagnosed with COVID. And because everything's so lackadaisical these days, um, no, no one's wearing a mask when they go into that patient's room. Family's not wearing a mask when they're going into that patient's room. CNA is not wearing a mask when they go into that patient's room. The nurse is not wearing a mask when they go in that patient's room. And they're going to room after room after room after room. So all of a sudden, the one patient who has COVID, all of a sudden, two doors down the way, they start having respiratory issues. Three doors down the way, they start having respiratory issues. A patient on the other side of the hallway, but because the CNA, you know, they CNA travel, they got a lot of patients, they start having respiratory issues. Your employee says, hey, I got to call in sick. I'm not feeling good. They start having, like, this is how it happens. This is the reality, but people don't even want to have that thought process to think, hey, COVID may be a thing because of that fear of that, because they know how COVID works. The flu doesn't really do that. I tell people all the time, the flu doesn't really do that. It doesn't really spread like that. Like, if it hits you, it hits you, and it usually only hits you. 
But COVID hits everybody. COVID, COVID has no games. Let, let's talk about this. I, I like this segment, right? Um, because this is a question that I invariably get. Do the vaccines still work? Uh, let me think about it. Let me think about it. Yes, right. Hopefully, we don't have to have any conversation in the year 2025 on whether the vaccines work. I'm hoping. In fact, I typically, especially in the year 2025, I typically don't even go into back and forth anymore on whether vaccines work or not. You have to show me data that showed that it didn't. At this point in 2025, you have to show me data that the vaccines didn't work. I'm not here to prove whether vaccines work or not. The proof is in the pudding. At this point, you got to show me the data that says it didn't work. And I can assure you, don't waste your time. You're not going to show me any data because nothing's there. So like I said, even though this variant, this NB1.8.1 variant is a little bit dodgier, right? The vaccines are still effective. Again, they're not as effective versus pri- as they were versus prior variants, but that's typically how vaccines work, right? And that's typically why we have to get vaccines on a year-to-year basis, right? Because we have to pick up for the new variants that come around because that's, that's what happens every time you get a new vaccine is it, it's a formulation of prior variants in the past. So yes, the vaccines still work. They may not necessarily be as effective, but yes, they still work. And and so that's why it's more important, right, for us to kind of recognize the symptoms, recognize them early, understand the treatment option that we have. The treatment options before, like vaccine, like uh, outpatient medications, like Paxlovid and others, still work, still effective, still need to take them, especially if we're trying to contain the spread. Wear your mask if you can. Socially isolate yourself if you can. Again, like I said, it's one of those things where I wish I could say, yeah, you definitely should socially isolate. But again, if you're walking around with COVID for a couple of days before you get symptomatic, I don't want to say the damage has been done, but like, you know, you, you, you put some work in on it. So the question I get is, are we going to get another surge in the summer? Obviously, I can't. I'm not a I'm not a I am a betting person, but uh, I can't guarantee that we're going to get a summer surge. But what I can say is that we've had a summer surge ever since COVID has been around. I don't know what you do with that information. I can't say that we have had a summer surge every time COVID has been around. Every time y'all get to travel in, Every time y'all get to be in outside, we've had a COVID surge. So I can't sit here and tell you that a summer surge is happening. I can just go by prior evidence that's shown that every time we have a summer, especially since COVID came around, we've had a surge. I'll leave it up to you to kind of decide what you want to do with that information. Leave it up to you to decide what you want to do with that information. Yeah, leave it in the comments. Let me leave it, leave it in the comments if you let me know uh, what, what you think, right? So again, like always, if you're, if you're feeling ill, feeling sick, get hydrated, get your over-the-counter medications, your Tylenol, your pain medication, your ibuprofen. If you can get some Paxlovid available, they still have all of these testing at most of your local pharmacies. I don't think they're giving them away free anymore because they used to give them away for free. But again, this administration wants to make it seem like COVID is not a thing. So I'm not sure if they've even given that free anymore. So you can get your testing at your local pharmacy. So especially if you're concerned and you're thinking about getting it, I mean, just protect yourself, right? That's that's all I can ask. Protect yourself, protect your family members. Again, this is an Omicron variant strain. The NB1.8.1 strain is an Omicron variant strain. So yes, it spreads a lot quicker to others. So your family members, especially those who those who have core morbid illnesses, who have a weaker immune system can be affected, right? And my my day, my goal is to make sure that everyone is as well taken care of. But more importantly, everyone is as well empowered with appropriate knowledge. So again, I don't want you guys to be running from the hills because you see people are starting to post about the NB1.8.1 variant. I just want you to be informed, right? And understand, hey, what are some things I need to look for? And what are some things I need to protect myself, right? And if you don't get, if you don't get nothing, right? Get the vaccinated, right? If you don't get nothing from this episode, yes, Dr. Pierre is still recommending the vaccine, even though he don't tell you every week to get a vaccine. Yes, he still recommends the vaccine. Yes, I still get vaccinated. Yes, my family still gets vaccinated. We're getting vaccinated. It's like, it is what it is. You prove to me, especially my anti-vaxxers, you prove to me uh, that vaccines don't work because I haven't seen no evidence yet.